Hey, and welcome to today's jazz guitar lesson on the chord changes to Duke Ellington's C Jam Blues. Now I'm gonna show you how to play this in two places on the fretboard in a very simple way. Now check that description for a link to my website where you can get both PDFs from today. That's the chord shapes and the chart. There's also a link there to my Patreon where the standard of the month is C Jam Blues where there's tons of additional learning materials for you. So C Jam Blues dates back to 1942, a Duke Ellington composition. It's obviously a blues in C, and when it comes to jazz blues, things can get quite interesting with chords and reharmonizations and passing chords and so forth. Today we're just gonna keep this one pretty simple and I'm gonna show you how to play in two places on the guitar down here and also up here, just because I think it's an important thing to learn how you can find the same chords in different places and if you're comping for someone, you've got different options. In terms of chord shapes you're gonna need for this one, there's just a few shapes, not many. We've got C7 off the A string. We can use the same shape to find F7 of fret eight and G7 at fret 10, so that's off the A string. We're gonna do the dominance off the E string as well, C7 off uh, the low E at fret eight, F7 fret one, and G7 at fret three. Those are the places for the chords because that's where the roots are. C, they're on the A string at fret three, and fret eight on the E string. F, fret eight on the A string, and fret one on the E, and G, fret 10 on the A, and fret three on the E. So that's where those chords are positioned, and we just need one other chord, D minor seven. We can do that on the A string just there, or fret five. Again, because that note of fret five on the A string is a D do it at fret 10 or so off the E string. So those are the shapes you're going to need. So the first place we're going to play the chords is down, down here and we're going to need the C7 off the A string there, the F7 off the E string there, the D minor 7 off the A string and the G7 off the E string. Now we start with four bars of C7, so one, two, three, four. Then we're going to go two bars of F7. Two bars of C7 next. D minor 7, one bar. G7, one bar. Then two bars of C7, so that's our 12 bars. And then we start again. Now, I think one of the difficult things there, uh, getting used to playing chord changes, is like that first line, four bars on one chord. It sounds simple, just playing the same thing, but it's quite often what happens in that instance when someone's practicing it is they might move too early or might move too late. They might play three bars or three and a bit bars or five bars. And so just a couple ways you can work on that because it's an important skill, especially when you're playing with other people because you need to be reliable with playing the chords at the right time, is either you could count each bar like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or just count the bars. So one, two, comes in. Uh, I think one of the best things you can do is just listen to the song a lot. Listen to it loads so you just feel where those chord changes come in. I'd imagine most viewers of this have played some blues before so they get that feeling of when that four chord wants to come in which we'll come back to later um, but I think just from listening to it a lot really helps. You could play along to versions of the song or even backing tracks. Uh, finally really important thing eventually to try and do when you manage to get used to where the chords are and changing between them is just link up where that melody sits in relation to those changes so like just the first change it would be one two three four da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. change da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. So just like that linking where the melody is sits with the chord changes so we've got this position down here and as you can see there's, if you're playing with a pick like I am today, there's some muting that needs to go on there. I've already made a, a video on that topic, so I will link that in the description. So if that's something you need to work on, it's yeah, it's a tricky thing, but it's an important thing so that you can basically, if you look, when I'm strumming, I'm strumming all six strings when I play these three note chords. Playing with the fingers is an easy solve for that, but you might not want to do that. So that's that's an important part of, of just playing these chords. Let's try it in the other position. So up here, starting fret eight, C seven, 
this shape again, six strings, three muted strings and three notes coming out, four bars of C7 up here, two bars of F7 off the A string, two bars of C7 off the E string, we've got the D minor 7 off the E string, the G7 off the A, C7. Do that again for you. E string, C7. F7. C7. D minus 7. G7. C7. So as you see, there's two places to play it. Good to know that you can play C7 there or there, and same goes for the other chords, because sometimes in other songs, you might want to find, say, a C7, an F7, or a D minor 7, or a G7 closer, and if you, say, you only know it in one place, that's going to maybe make for inefficient changes, and also just the understanding of the guitar, how you can find chords in different places with the roots on different strings, as we're using here off the, the E and the A. Now on to variations, harmonic analysis and the turnaround as well. So first off, a big variation you'll see on this, and I'll just show you this one today, is in bar two, people might go to F7. So instead of four bars of C7 like we've been doing, which is the simplest way to play it, like that, and then go to the F7, they might go one, two, three, four, then F for a bar. probably get this some people might do that with the head even it can work or they might do it in, like keep the changes as I've got today for the head and then when it comes to the soloing put that four chord on it's it's not uncommon for the kind of the changes in a jazz blues to become a bit fluid and people take liberties and move things around even if they're playing with quite standard things once you get used to playing a jazz blues so on to the harmonic analysis this is a blues in C. What does the key of C mean first off? It means the following chords normally in C major, which would be C major 7 chord 1, D minor 7 chord 2, E minor 7 chord 3, F major 7 chord 4, G7 chord 5, A minor 7 chord uh, 6, B minor 7 flat 5 chord 7. That's 1. Now if we look at those, we haven't got many of those chords. We've got the D minor 7, the 2, we've got the G7, the 5. We do have a C chord and an F chord, but they're not major 7s, they're dominant. So what we end up with is a, a 1 chord, but its voice is a dominant 7. But we're feeling like that is the 1 chord, even though dominant chords are normally 5 chords. Uh, we then move to chord 4 as a dominant, and back to chord 1. And then we get the classic jazz line, jazz progression, sorry, I should say, 2, D minor 7, G7, and the 5 chord, back to chord 1. It's as basic as that. Now, the big difference, I think, to a traditional blues, like, like you know, a, a blues guitar player might play, is, is really that bottom line, where it's going 2, 5, 1. Normally there, you get 5, 4, 1, and a, and a turnaround. So, like, G7, F7, C, and then, you know, like a... Or maybe the that sort of stuff. So that, that's the big difference, really, having that that two five one there. Now, if you were playing the chords for someone else, one dangerous part of this song would be when you've got the last two bars, bars eleven and twelve, C seven, and then when you start again and go back to the beginning, you've got to play another four bars of C seven, which means you've actually got to play six bars of C seven in a row, which is definitely a place where people could lose their their place. So what often happens in practice? even though these are the basic chords for the song, in those last two bars, people put a turnaround. And I'll show you a few today. We could go, instead of just going, you know, D minor seven, G seven, then two bars of C seven. Then we start again now. And that's where I think people could lose where they are. What we're gonna do is show you a few ways. You could have uh, C seven, A seven, D minor seven, G seven. So that would sound like this. So if I play just the last line. start again. Um, I quite like uh, C7, E flat 7, D7, D flat 7, so that would sound like. A bit more fruity, the bass player, someone you're playing with might look at you and go, oh, what did you just do there? Uh, another classic one would be C7, C sharp diminished, D minus 7. G7, which would sound like this. Final 
one. I said I chose three, but why not have four? This one, C slash E, just like a C chord with the third in the bass. E flat diminished, D minor seven, G seven, which would go. What that does by having the turnaround there, it really does, I think, you know, bring the song back to the beginning, exactly doing what a turnaround should and signaling to everyone, oh, we're going again, we're starting again. Um, otherwise, I think six bars of, on that one chord, it might sound a bit dull, might sound a bit boring, but it's good to have that vanilla way to start with, that very simple paired back way, and then you can add to it later, like I've just shown you a few things you could put in there. So don't forget you can grab the chord shapes and the charts with the two different ways to play it from my website. Also check out a link to that Patreon uh, where you know there's a standard every month so there's, a, there's already a back catalogue of a good few months of, of standards and chord melodies and solos for you to learn and different ways to comp the chords. There's, there's plenty of materials on there. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions in the comments and I'll, I'll get back to you with anything you want to ask, you want me to clarify. Uh, jazz Guitar Lessons every Wednesday. Thank you for watching. Please hit that like button, leave me a comment and I will see you next time.